Hello, my name is Jimmy. I'm a child passenger safety technician and well, thank you for joining me in this, the Canadian Spec 2024 GMC Denali Canyon. So it's basically like the utmost trim for like the road going version. But if you look at it, it's not really like a road going version, is it? Because what GMC has done here is it's given it a two inch lift and a really wide track and it actually looks well, quite a bit more off-road ruggedness than what the Denali name kind of suggests. No, this isn't the AT4 or AT4X. You can still get those and you can definitely increase the capability of the vehicle. But this, well, actually, as is, it's already pretty capable. And what's nice is GMC has decided to just not give you any options. Well, at least for the cab size and bed length, as well as the engine, because you can only get it now in this configuration. A quad cab, six foot two bed, as well as a high output 2.7 liter four cylinder, making 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. It's all mated to an eight speed automatic, which you know what, for most, it's gonna be absolutely fine. But before we get to all of that, let's talk about the exterior a little bit. As I said, it did receive a two inch lift, so it does look quite muscular. On the front end, you got these beautiful LED daytime running lights, LED headlamps, and of course, you can't have a Denali without this amazing chrome grille. So LED fog lights down below as well. On the side, you get 20 inch wheels and they're nice and bright because as I said, it is a Denali. And you get these side markers just above the wheels. I mean, they had this on the previous generation, like 25 and 3500s. But I, you know what? They, they fit this. Actually, they look quite good. I'd like those quite a bit. You do get the proximity door locks on the front doors, but sadly, not on the rear. And out back, you do get the integrated step just on the rear bumper. You get a soft opening rear tailgate and you get a little bit of a surprise underneath. There's actually the storage area in here and it is fully sealed. So I don't know, put drinks or whatever you want in here. It's kind of neat. The bed itself has plenty of tie down points as well as you get this 120 volt outlet on the side so you can plug in all your devices, tools, whatever you need. Jumping onto the inside, the rear seats, well, it is spacious enough for me at five foot 11. I have enough headroom. It's not too much of a problem here. Within the center armrest, I get integrated cup holders and there's also integrated cup holders right here on the center console. Beneath that, you get your vents, USB ports, as well as another 112 volt outlet just below. Below the seats, you get a little bit of storage, but not too much. And you can't really fold the seats up for additional space like some full-size trucks can. As mentioned, I am a child passenger safety technician. And well, I put in a few child seats just to show you how much space there is within the Canyon here. On the driver's side, this is a Clike Ling infant seat. The base here, no problems getting that in. The lower anchors were easy enough to find and the carrier was able to glide right in. Yes, the doors aren't super wide, but I didn't have much problems putting the carrier inside. On the passenger side, this is a Klek Foof in rear facing. I did have to move the front seat forward a little bit, but as you can see here, I'm 5'11", and I still fit with really no issues. If you're putting the Foof in forward facing, you can do that as well. Just note that because it is a truck and you can't fold the rear seats down, well, the top anchors, they're a little bit awkward to use, so do make sure you check your owner's manual before, well, putting in a forward facing seat. And you also get two sets of lower anchors just on the bottom. As for the front seats, they're actually really comfortable. I must say the Denali seats are heated as well as cooled and they're just really, really comfortable. And I love the quilting that's on it as well. It just kind of elevates, well, the status that you feel in here. In front of me, the steering wheel was pretty typical. You got all the buttons that you would need to control like the dash as well as your infotainment. No complaints there. And then behind that, a very nice digital cluster. You get a couple different views from your speedometer to a map view or just a very simplistic readout of your speed or you can have whatever else. And there's even an off-road page so you can really customize it to what you would like. And there's three different themes as well. So if you're not a big fan of how this looks, you can always change that. You do get a heads up display up top. It is a color display, which is nice. And that shows you turn by turn navigation, speed, speed limit as well as the next track that you play within the infotainment. Speaking of which, the infotainment is the latest from Google. And you know what? It works really well. 
You got a dedicated row of buttons on the left so that you get easy access to Google Assistant, CarPlay, Maps, whatever you need. And in the center, well, the display is just very simple and easy to use. You get wireless CarPlay, which I've been using mostly. And I gotta say, I do love the dedicated volume knob just here on the left. That just makes life, well, easier for me. And just below, you do have your dedicated climate control buttons. You have all the buttons there. You don't have to dive into like the screen to press anything additional. I do like that. You do have some switches down below. I love this all windows down button, but sadly it's not all windows up. Like you can put them down, but to bring them back up, you have to individually pull them back up. It's kind of weird. And then the center console here is where you have your shifter, of course, and your dial to change your drive modes, as well as your four wheel drive modes. So you have either two wheel drive, auto, four high, and four low here. Overall, the interior, while it definitely has gone a little bit upscale thanks to what the Denali trim, this leather and wood, I do really like it. And the stamped Denali that's here on the front, it's just, well, it's just nice. However, there is still like cheap plastic pieces on the top. It doesn't, you know, fully transform the interior, but what you do see and what you do, well, mainly feel and touch, those points are quite nice. The one point of controversy about the interior here is they moved some of the buttons to the screen itself. For example, if you need to change your headlight mode from auto to low beam, you do have to dive into a menu in the infotainment to do so. It honestly, I don't think that's too big of a deal because there's an auto mode. You leave it on that and just let the truck do what it needs to do. You don't really need to change that. I mean, sure, going into your fog lights every single time you need it, you have to press that and then you turn on your front fog lights. Maybe that's a little bit of a hassle, but it's not that bad. It really isn't. The only button I wish that was a physical one is probably the traction control one because you have to dive into the menu of the vehicle, then on the drive and park, then you can turn it off. So there's three clicks to do so. But it is what it is. We're out of the generation where we need to have less buttons and more screens. So you know what? This is a good combination of the two. In terms of the powertrain mentioned right at the beginning, you do get a 2.7 liter four cylinder. It's 310 horsepower, 430 pound feet of torque, made it to an eight speed automatic, and it can tow 7,700 pounds with this trim. The powertrain itself, well, it's no slouch because when you give it some, it's pretty quick and it actually sounds kind of good because you hear that turbo whistle. It's just, it's faint. But you hear it every now and then as you dip your foot in. I actually really enjoy just hearing the engine itself. I love it. In terms of the ride, like all GMC products, or at least the GMC trucks, it definitely is on the firm side. Some would say it's sporty and some would say it's uncomfortable. But for me, it's a really, really good blend because it feels like I'm so connected to the road and the steering feel, there's actual steering feel here. If I go over a bump, if I go over like anything that's on the road, I can feel like I'm connected onto the road. And this is rare for vehicles of, well, this generation. Not a lot of cars or trucks have steering feel that's remotely close to this. So I do like that. And don't think you have to drive all the time with all the, well, adaptive cruise control and lane centering, you can enable that and it can partially drive for you. And honestly, you'll have a pretty good time doing so. It's surprisingly just comfortable overall. On the highway though, if it is a really bumpy highway, especially over those expansion joints, it does get maybe a little bouncy in here. And yeah, there's, there's that like the only kind of like downfall of this kind of suspension layout and well, just the firmness of it. But honestly, I don't think it's that bad. I really don't think it's that bad. Overall, I think the Canyon really exceeds well, what you expect in the midsize truck segment. The segment, let's be honest, has been pretty stale for a while. The Tacoma hasn't changed. The Frontier hasn't changed. The Rangers, well, the previous generation from another market. But this, 
this kind of revitalization, and of course you got the new Tacoma coming, there's the new Ranger coming. I'm actually very excited about this market. The full-size truck market has been, well, just been blown up. And if you really want a nice truck, like top of the line with all the features, it's like a hundred thousand Canadian dollars, if not more. This at least is still somewhat affordable. I mean, somewhat, because as spec here, it's sixty-five thousand Canadian dollars, and yeah, for a mid-sized truck, it's it's quite a bit. Remember, like the '90s Ford Ranger, you can get one for like. 20 grand. <laughs> yeah, things have definitely changed. However, the Canyon, at least the starting price is about 48.5. So to get into it, it's not that bad. But even this isn't, well, everything you can stack on. Because if you get the AT4X and you stack on options on that, yeah, it's like 70,000. <laughs> it's, a, it's a decent amount of money for not that big of a truck at least how you kind of feel from the inside anyways on the outside it looks massive love those fenders in any case let me know what your thoughts are of the new canyon well in the comment section down below is this your favorite new truck do you miss that old v6 or well do you miss that diesel because i definitely know a lot of people who do in any case thank you so much for watching this video like the video you do subscribe if you want to see more i'll catch you later take care